everybody, welcome to another video. If you are new, my name is Abby and I'm currently in recovery from anorexia. Today I thought I would film a sit down video because a few of you have asked me some questions and I'd like to answer them and give you some advice on different topics. So first of all, somebody asked me how I cope with calories on menus. There are a few things I like to think when I see calories on menus. So one, me and my boyfriend like to think that calories on menus are overestimations because if you think about it, food places are more likely to get in trouble if the calories they've listed on their menu are lower than the actual calories in the food. So we like to think that calories are just overestimated to save basically restaurants from getting in trouble. So if you think of it like that and think, okay, these probably aren't accurate, they're probably just overestimations, then you sort of think to yourself, well, there's no point of not getting what I want if anything I read isn't going to be accurate anyway. And that's what I like to think. I also like to think that calories are literally just a number. They have no value, no meaning, it is literally just a number written down. You could write down the letter A and it has absolutely no significance, but for some reason a little number has significance in my head and it is because I have trained my brain to think that numbers are dangerous. And it is so crazy when you think of it like that. You've literally made something feel dangerous so your body's like, mm, no, I'm not going near that. But when you think, okay, wait a minute, this is just a number. I've trained myself wrong and to think that this is dangerous, but it's not, so I'm gonna eat it anyway. And that way, if you eat it anyway and you've seen it, one, you're challenging yourself more, and two, you are retraining your brain by doing that. And the power in that is absolutely amazing and inspiring. The main thing that helped me cope with seeing calories on menus is accepting the idea of gaining weight. Now, for people with an eating disorder, this is possibly the most scary thing in the world. But when you sort of think to yourself, okay, the worst that can happen is I gain weight, you sort of think, okay, that's not too bad. Like, I'm not gonna die if I eat this. And it's just sort of weighing up how dangerous is this actually? That brings me on to some factors that help me cope with weight gain. So, one thing that actually made me excited to gain weight was the idea of developing into a woman's body. When I thought about the fact that gaining weight would mean I would get bigger boobs and a bigger bum, I was like, yeah, okay. Because, you know, I want to feel like a woman. I don't want to feel like a child. And that helped me with the idea of gaining weight. Another thing that helped me is realising that no matter what, I'm going to be me. Gaining weight doesn't mean that I'm going to lose my identity. Yes, I might feel like anorexia is my identity because it's been a part of me for so long, but I'm still me without it. I will have the same qualities and characteristics that I have now if I gained weight. Sort of think to yourself, you're still you, you're not gonna change on the inside, so why does it matter? It's actually a good test to gain weight because the people who love you won't care. And if, for example, someone did care that you gained weight, they're just not the type of people you want around. So it's a good way to find your true people. And that's always nice as well. You always wanna be surrounded by people who love you and care about you no matter what your size is. Also, if you gain weight, you get new clothes and that's always nice. You have an excuse for a new wardrobe. Surround yourself with positivity. One thing I've done in recovery so much is watch other people who are recovering on YouTube or follow recovery accounts on Instagram and the repetition that weight gain is healthy and that health is more important than the way you look has helped me so much. If you're following diet accounts or people who are glamorizing over exercising then you're going to maintain that unhealthy mindset so unfollow people who post diet culture or exercise whether they're your friends or not it doesn't matter unfollow them i've personally left a few of my friends private stories they were posting triggering things like over exercising and dieting and losing weight and things like that and i just couldn't take it anymore and since unfollowing and filtering my social media accounts and watching youtube videos i have actually had such a change of perception. I've had such a mental shift 
and it's so lovely to actually realize that that whole time I had the power to change my mind I just had to be around positive influences enough to actually want to change my mind. Watching Stephanie Buttermore's All In Journey was the thing that just made me go, I'm going all in. Like, she just completely changed my mindset on going all in. So make a recovery playlist if you want to and keep going back to that or if someone else has a playlist, I actually have a playlist if you want to watch that, then watch that. I will link my recovery playlist below because if it can help any of you that would be amazing. Watching Stephanie Buttermore and other YouTubers who have been through recovery has just helped me so much and it's made me want to help others and that's what inspired me to start my own channel, which I'm actually filming on right now. <laughs> Calories are a measurement of energy at the end of the day. So think to yourself when you see the calories on the menu, wow, I'm gonna feel so energized after this. That's always nice. You're gonna feel happy. You're gonna feel energized. You're gonna have enough energy to speak to people, to socialize. Definitely during my quasi recovery stage, I just felt so socially tired. I just couldn't talk to people. It would drain me. Now I feel like I could talk non-stop. I do talk non-stop to be fair. Henry has an ear full of me all day, every day. <laughs> also remembering that if I gain weight, Living a free life, that is weight that I needed to gain. Because at the end of the day, if you gain weight eating normally and eating an amount that you feel full on and energized on and happy on, that is what you should be eating. So if you gain weight, it was just weight you needed to gain and you were unhealthy before. Healthy has no typical look. You can look a certain way and be unhealthy and someone else can look that way and be healthy. So health is freedom. Health is happiness. Health is being able to eat that chocolate biscuit. And if you can't do that, then you are not living a healthy lifestyle and it doesn't matter if you look good because you're not healthy, your body's crying. If you were another person looking at you, you would definitely tell yourself to eat more. I know you would. So please do it. Eat more. You deserve to eat more. I also just want to put it out there that calorie calculator websites that calculate how much calories you need in a day are wrong. The average person needs 2,000 calories and that is still wrong. That is still low for some people, especially people in recovery. Because right now, I'm finding it difficult not to calculate my total daily calories. They are around 3,000 calories. It just shows that 2,000 calories isn't enough for people. So please take that with a pinch of salt because it is not true. People don't need 2,000 calories a day. Some people do, some people need less, and some people need much, much more. So definitely never listen to websites or things that tell you, if a doctor tells you, okay, well, fair enough, they're a doctor, but still, they need to know your life. They need to know what's gone on, they need to know what's going on, they need to know everything about you to be able to actually accurately state how many calories you need, because only your body knows, only your hunger knows. If you're thinking about food a lot and you're not hungry physically, you are still hungry. You are mentally hungry and it means that you've deprived yourself of food for so long, your body does not trust you. So definitely listen to yourself as much as you can. I don't even know where I've gone with this video. I've literally just become so passionate talking about this because it is generally something I've struggled with for so long. To be able to have the shift that I've had mentally it's just unreal. I never thought it would happen and it can definitely happen to you as well. If you really think about it, life is so temporary and one day we're going to all be looking back on our lives and wishing that we had just lived. We had been free and happy and had food freedom. So think about your future self and start now. Every day counts. Every day matters. So make every day worthwhile. Anyway, I think I'm done rambling on for now. I hope some of this could be helpful. Once again, I will either link my recovery playlist or link some videos that I think might be helpful for you if you are in recovery down below. 
If you enjoyed, please give the video a like. And again, if you want to see more of my videos because you think they might help you, then subscribe. And comment if you have any questions or if you want me to give you any more advice because I'm happy to do so. I want to help as much as I possibly can because I know what a struggle it is and each and every one of you deserves to be free. So thank you again for your time and I'll speak to you all very, very soon. Goodbye.